Hi, it's Bernie Gobach. On the 18th of September, 2011, going back to basics with some imagery from the Brazilian photographer, Mona Kuhn. She's in Spectrum magazine this week and displays at the uh, Flowers Gallery in London through the uh, 5th to the 29th of October. And you can see an extended viewing of this in the Sunday Times. .co.uk spectrum. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the Sunday Times and the Sunday Business Post for an American's perspective in Ireland on my red bench in County Tipperary, mainly for folks that are on a programming or a um, creative multimedia course that I have, and I have a program at educasting.ie, and for Irish in Cambodia and Thailand, Japan, Australia, immigrants who I know who once, some of them, were in my classrooms, but now are gone. And they probably picked up on this news that Ireland kicked ass yesterday, winning over Australia in the Rugby um, World Cup, which is going to put the um, going to put Irish recovery hopes at a higher level. I mean, after all, all good sporting heroes lead in new expansions in the economy. Check out how that works on my blog, www.insideview.ie, or listen to me on Audioboo. I like that place. My nick, there's Top Gold, just like it is on Twitter. Inside these papers, I'm going to do a quick little look, not at stuff that will probably make it onto RTE, but things that will make it into my classroom. Let's we'll start with Damien Kyber. He has this thing called Inside or Irish, Outlook, Irish Outlook on the business page of the Sunday Times. Europe may face prospect of ruins is the headline. And he basically points out, poor Greece, a peripheral nation just like Ireland, a basket case. And he says that the residual assets left in Greece after its inevitable default won't entice investors. He explains why it's a basket case and how it needs another 8 billion euro by the end of September just to pay the wages and keep ATMs running. I mean, things could look that way in, in, in Ireland. I remember in September 2008 when Brian Lenahan made the bank guarantee. Ruth was asking, my wife was asking, what the heck, what's the story there? The story is you don't have the money. People can't get their wages out of the cash tills. That's a problem. Hey, this is cool. Kate Manzi has QR codes gone to another level. Scientists um, have made QR codes an easy thing now. I like the story about how it works. And if you're in a PR course or you're in the emerging trends and technologies that I, that I teach, I want to hammer this QR code thing home. Annie Lennox was involved in a trial using QR codes. She made a video attached it to a QR code that attached to a silk dress that she donated to a cause and then you can, can listen to Annie explaining where she wore the dress. That's pretty cool. QR codes, working creatively, creative multimedia, so that we teach. I work at a thing called lit.ie. Here's another thing for a guy who's in the PR course. PR gurus can help TalkTalk Talk before it speaks, to think before it speaks. Here's the story. TalkTalk Talk is a call center in Waterford. I think one of our graduates is working there, or was working there. 575 staff were let go just days before that staff heard the news or read about it on Facebook that they're losing their jobs. A PR company got a contract worth about 570,000 euro. And um, I, lo I just love what Talk Talk's done to the concept called corporate social responsibility, a topic that I have in my curriculum because the fact of the matter is, CSR, <laughs> they didn't hit all the hot buttons on that by letting the staff go. Into the Sunday Business Post, a newspaper of record when it comes to business in Ireland. Good stuff. The blue that's on the front cover is Dublin's jerseys. Maybe it's they're tipping Dublin to win the All-Ireland football, uh, football Championship today. Inside the news section, a story by Gavin Daly. And look, if you're on the PR course, you need to look at this article. It's titled the headline, Drug Firm to Expand Temporary Factory. And just try to figure out just exactly what did Gavin put in that article that the press release didn't. So I'm giving out this article as a sample that I want to have reverse engineered as a press release. And the idea would be help a journalist like Gavin or Karen Wood or Adrian Weckler write a story that simply copies and pastes into a galley and becomes a news item. In the Sunday Business Post or the Times or the Nationalist, easy pickings there, local paper. Here's the Post Reporter, which kind of like means, okay, we didn't do much at all on this press release. Helping companies to make the most of a web presence, and it profiles the Irish firm eCeltic. 
and what that does to online marketing, what they claim to do to transparently demonstrate the increase in online traffic through their analytics program. You've got to be able to measure in metrics what you're doing in a campaign. So under the category called metrics, this kind of thing fits. The PR curriculum also fits to show a good press release can make an item in a newspaper. Catherine Mahoney is talking about the value of news. She writes in the column called Media World in Sunday or, uh, City Business Post. And her hope is that, look, those who work in the field of reporting and professional journalism hope that no matter where the content appears, on my video screen, on YouTube, or on a tweet, or on Facebook, that journalists can earn a living for which they've been, been paid and trained. Commercial independence and reporting. Hopeful goals. Keeping all the social media participants on side. Another interesting story. It's running, Chris Connolly has a story. It's running in towards the uh, media marketing section of the Sunday Business Post. The point's this. The rugby, the Irish Rugby Board, or the International Rugby Board, recognizes that social media sites are important. Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, yada, yada, yada. But they want to make sure that then their players don't go tweeting on the field and that they hold their tongues. And uh, Chris Connolly is pointing out that uh, his seat as a solicitor in the sports law unit of the litigation department of A&L Goodbody, that this is happening. And if you are a sports personality, be aware, your tweets might not be your own. Kitty Colchester, Second Nature Oils in Kilkenny, discovered that the back garden could actually produce organic rapeseed crop, making oil that I've seen actually on local shelves. The story's called Homemade Careers. It's in the Sunday Times. Worthwhile looking at. Uh, from the point of view of saying, if you are in the PR space and you're trying to promote foodies or organic food or artisan foods, and I, we just had we just had really good Crow's Farm artisan rashers today, which I'd recommend buying. Well, it's both a process as well as an authentic kind of a thing you're doing. In this case, authenticity is local, local, and uh, unique twist, good marketing, good PR. And if it's all done right, it may end up in the home where people buy your product or in the lifestyle section of a newspaper like the Sunday Times. Hey, we're in my back garden where the flag for tip is still blowing. The tomatoes are nearing the end of their life, even though there are some out there that are well, almost ready to be plucked. Well, we hope they're plucked before the frost kicks in. And you can see these images on Flickr.com, so Crow, so Kyrie's eyes. We're all surely grab a shot of this Dahlia before the end of the season. Thanks for listening. It's Bernie Goldbach, Top Code on Twitter, saying bye for now.